Hello, St. Luke, St. Luke friends. Our well wishes, loved ones. It's just a great day. It's a day that God has made. And I don't know what you're going to do, but I will rejoice and I, I will I'll praise him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him glory today. I have the victory in Jesus. You know that? I have the victory. Somebody needs that. I have victory in Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to. Pastor T.C. Johnson is Word and Worship Time here at the St. Luke Christian Church in Huntsville, Alabama, where God is with us seeking uh, to save. Amen. We're just so blessed to be able to uh, communicate and have communion with you in this uh, Word and Worship moment. Amen. And we're so thankful um, looking at all of the things happening around us on every platform of life trouble all around as grandma could say but but god amen he, he, in these crazy times he keeps our mind in perfect in perfect peace it's prayer time we thank god and thank you for praying for those who are uh, on our prayer list we are to have a prayer list on the website you can go uh, to the website uh it's going to be up hopefully by the first of next week a website category where you can go up and go to it and, and put your prayer, your name for prayer, and if you want to say a comment about uh, which direction, amen, you want uh, your family to pray for you, um, you, you'll be able to do that. We'll get those, consolidate those, print those off, we'll take those to the altar, uh, place them in our a special place in the altar, I, I believe it, when we place on our heart um, what we want God to put in his hand, just place it on your heart. We're getting ready to do that. It's prayer time. Be sure to pray for those who bereave, those who are convalescing, and those who are sick. And then pray for those who are in troubled homes. Amen. In troubled homes. Uh, the enemy is um, out to attack family. We have to realize we wrestle not with flesh and blood. Amen. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. We Sometimes we have to pray and, and, and take our hand off that thing. Sometimes we're trying to steer it in a particular way and it just won't go that way. What we need to do is just take our hand hand off it and pray for for the situation. I ask God, God help me. And I think a powerful thing to do. I think a very powerful thing to do. It, it, this, this will break some of the um, stiffness this will this will this will take out some of the venom um if you can say honey you know we've been going back and forth about this and trying to fix one another whatever um, let's pray together Do, you know let's let's pray together i don't know how we got here but let's pray together or say, pray for me. I want to hear your heart to God for me and the family. Pray for me and the family. I want to hear your heart. I want to hear you talk to God about me and the family. And, and stop all the, you know, the stuff. Trying to maneuver and manipulate, have the last word, all that stuff. Stop that today. Stop that. Honey, let's pray. I want to hear your heart. I want to hear what you say to God about me and the children. I want to hear what, what you have to say. I want to hear what you say. I want to hear what you say. That will make this house be more than a house and be a home. So, 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 so gather around. Let's pray prayer. Praise God. I said Sunday and I'll continue to say because I believe it with all that's in me. God does not show up in your edifice, in your sanctuary, in your home, at your altar. Does not show up because you're going to give him a word. God, God comes into the praise, into the worship, and you worship him. When he shows up, he'll show up with the word that you need. But first, you got to just get it and just worship. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, our house broken up. Thank you, Lord. Children acting great. Thank you, God. Not enough money, not enough. Thank you, God. Not sure where all the attacks are coming from. Why is this so hard? Thank you, God. God, we love you. Just, just tell him in the midst of your tears, your sorrow, your hurt, your uncertainty, all the midst of your, your joy, your happiness. You see, you're either in a trial or you're getting ready to go in a trial or you just come out of a trial. But trials, troubles, tribulations accompany life. And no, regardless of where you are along that, that con those contours, where you are, in one, just got out of one, going into one, wherever, or just, you know, it may not be a trial. I haven't had one for a minute. But anywhere you are along that line, Tell the Lord these words. Say, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. Oh, God. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Say that again. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me. Nobody else would or could. In such a special way, that's why I praise you. I lift you up, Lord, I mag thank you. Magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Thank you, God. In the middle of a pandemic, God, filled with praise. Uncertain, God, I praise you. I magnify you. You're good, good God. Good, good Lord. Our Father, we just say thank you for another opportunity to enter your presence, God. You who are holy, completely just, and so, so, so merciful, God, with unendless love toward each of us. God, we say thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Let us feel it, dear God, good God, for touching, oh, messed up us. And let us feel your presence. Thank you, God. Thank you for Jesus. Let your name be glorified in his words and his, in his works and, and his ways, God. God, we say thank you for Jesus, for it's in him that we see you, we see your love, we see your care, we see your mercy, we see your power, God, and we need your power. There's so many instances in every home right now, God, because the devil comes to steal, he comes to, seeks to kill, he seeks to destroy lives and, and love, God, because he's the opposite. God, I pray right now for power in every home power to forgive, the power to listen, the power to hear, the power to be considerate and concerned in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Lord. Thank you, God. The power to give up what we think is right for sometimes things we think may be just wrong. Give us power, God. Thank you right now, Father. We say we love you. Let your will be done, God. I pray for every heart under the sound of my voice. Right now, I pray for every home, God. Let your feeling be um, present in, in every home, God. You blessed us so much sometimes we cannot see your hand at work. You brought us from one station to another. And God, it's sad to say that in those stations where you have brought us, the devil still try to steal our joy. By confusion in the family, the, the lack of consideration, the lack of communication. God, I pray right now uh, with selfishness. It's about me. When in the family, it can't be about me. It has to be about us. Thank you, God. 
Thank you, God. Now, Father, be merciful because some of us have never seen what a spouse should look like or be like or act like. And we're just, we're just doing what we think. Some of us have been hurt so bad, God, that we're afraid uh, to give ourselves. We're afraid to trust somebody. So God, I pray that your character will be resident. Your humility, your meekness will be resident. Amen. Within every heart. Now God, we live in a dark and dismal world. We pray that you will control this virus. We thank you for the numbers going down. We pray for those who have lost people through this COVID-19. We ask you to clear out the confusion about the, the vaccine and the drug. God, we ask you that, that people realize folk have already died. Don't let anybody else die just to, to make a conscious decision. We realize that the drug is not 100%, that there are some anomalies that, anomalies that occur in some cases, but there's so few. So God, I say thank you now. Thank you for St. Luke. Thank you for each member. I pray for those on our prayer list. Ingo, Brother Freeman, Brother Munson. Brother Charlie Burge, Brother Hall, Sister DeVance, Brother Mother Tiny Ellison, all of our seniors, God, I pray for. Brother Fletcher and his mom, God, I pray for. Hold them in the very heart of the Lord. You are the great provider. I pray for the homeless right now, God, I thank you for every. Now and then, once or twice a week, we have a request, and we, we've been blessed to be able to meet the request of someone who's outdoors. Bless those struggling mentally. God, thank you. Bless those who are not in a sound mind, but God, I know you can close people in the right mind. We say thank you, God. We ask you, Father, to help us. So this is your will. Have your way. Let your will be done. We say thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I feel the victory. I, uh, that song we sang, uh, victory is mine. Amen. Vic no chance uh, of losing. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today, hallelujah, is mine. And now I'm, I'm sharing with you right now something. Um, if you can't have victory in your home, Can't have peace in your home. Can't find joy and happiness in your home. You need to take a necessity. What's happening in this house? I can't have joy and peace. Amen. Amen. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. Spiritual wickedness in high places. I want you to turn with me just for a few moments to a short word for this word and worship. And it is in the book of Philippians. It is in chapter 4, and it's a well-known area of Scripture. I've heard people talk about it many times. It's in the fourth chapter of Philippians, and I want to read um, verse 11, 12, and 13. Philippians chapter 4, 11, 12, and 13. He said, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned, I have learned in whatsoever state I am, there will to be content. He said, I have learned to be content in whatever platform He said, I know both how to be a base and how to abound, to be low, or how to be up. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer, be a base. Verse 13 says, I can do. All things through Christ, 
which strengthens me. I want to talk about a can-do attitude. Can-do attitude. The writer of Philippian, Philippian is ascribed to the apostle Paul. Paul is writing uh, this church in all of Paul writings. There are teachings called that doctrinal instruction. And then there are practicums or how that works out in life. So Paul give you, gives doctrine or discipline. Then he tells you what it should look like in behavior and in conduct. Philippian is um, a letter to a church that he's not just proud of, but he appreciates because this church was a church that supported his ministry financially and in prayer. And should I say it the other way, in prayer and financially. They supported his service to God, they supported him as an instrument, teaching and taking the gospel of Jesus Christ in areas where Paul was otherwise endangered. This one church was a church that recognized his need and met him. God used them. Evidently, a period of time had happened when they had not been able uh, to um, to do that. And it's evident that uh, from reading of the text that that Paul was rejoicing and Paul didn't get down when they couldn't do anything for him. When they were unable to give, Paul then complain. Paul then send them any ugly texts, any bad email. Paul then um, question their relationship. Paul teaches us a can-do attitude. Can-do attitude has Within it, the faith to believe that God works all things together for good. A can-do attitude looks at circumstances regardless of how, um, how dreadful, how terrible they may look, but look and, and, and are able to, in faith, be able to say the Lord going to make a way. No, it looks bad. Can do attitude. You, 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 you look at this particular text and find out that Paul explains to us what, how to have a can do attitude. Paul is saying you haven't been able to meet the needs. But don't worry because Paul teaches us in this lesson that he had learned. In other words, before you gave uh, to me, before you were meeting that need that I had, before you did it, I had learned that things are not going to go my way. I learned that I was going to be in situations. I learned that I was going to have trials and tribulations. I had learned that uh, already. That I've learned uh, that I've been in those places and I have learned, he says, that in whatever state, wherever I am on the spectrum of life, in social situations or personal situations, he says, I have learned in whatever state I am and that with I have to maintain my Christian character. I have to say uh, what is real. I'm, I'm in a mess. 
but I'm not a mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in the pit, but I'm not going to get pitiful, and I'm not going to act like a pit bull. Amen. I'm locked in a prison, but God, my God is not locked out. I can't do a spirit that says this is going to pass. The Lord will make a way. Paul here says, I learned. A lot of times we don't learn. And when you don't learn the principles of living uh, the life uh, with Jesus as a Jesus follower, if you don't learn, you have to go through the lesson over and over again. So, so every now and then you have to stop and ask, Lord, now, Lord, what's the lesson here? And, and Paul tells us the lesson is, is to be content in whatever state. Con content means that I'm not cantankerous. Contempt means I'm not cantankerous and, and cursing and crazy. I, I, I'm content. Things are falling apart. As much as I can fix, I'm going to fix it. The rest that I can't fix, I'm going to have to leave it in the Lord's hand. But you, you're not going to pull me to the place to where my blood pressure up and, and my face all cracked up and I want to no, but I have learned some, somebody somebody is in class right now thank you Holy Ghost somebody the Lord is teaching how to be content see it's easy to be a Christian when the water is calm and the thunder is quiet and the the skies are blue and not dark, lightning, the wind's just a nice breeze. Being content there is one thing, but when the storms are rage, hallelujah. But what's your Christianity? What's your uh, uh, Christian attitude like when the storms are rage, raging all around? Can do, a can do attitude. Paul said, I had to learn it. It means I went through enough in order to get a degree. So when it comes up on me now, I don't act the way I once did. That's growing up, that's maturity. Yeah. I don't go and slam the door and not speak or speak the wrong stuff. I don't do that. I don't, we, it's just, it's just here. It's just, I, I, but I had to learn, I had to go through that over and over again. I'm not busting no walls. I'm not, amen, amen. I'm not jumping in the car and running off. Um, I'm not angry with everybody on my job because I didn't get the point. I learned because I've been through enough to know that this bad attitude doesn't mean it, my situation bad and my attitude bad. It's all bad together. Is the situation bad? Just go have, and have a good attitude. Cause, cause bad situations, uh, if you let them win, they stay in the game longer. And you let the bad situation win when it turns you with a, to a bad attitude. Like the, Paul says here, to have a can-do is something you have to learn. So don't, don't, don't be discouraged. Don't, don't be discouraged. We all get caught off guard. It ought to be a thing of progress. Amen. Grandma and them used to say the things I used to do. I, I used to cry and wail and, and be so sad and so hurt. Uh, you didn't come home last night or last week and blah, blah, blah. I learned. I'm going to maintain my Christian conduct and character. I'm not going to. Mm, help me here, Holy Ghost. He, he says, he says, um, in in the passage I've learned, whatsoever state that that was the reason why I chose this. Whatsoever state, Paul specifically with the Philippians church is talking about this idea of having stuff or not having stuff, and he used food 
as an example. You know, I've been hungry and I've been full. That's a state. You know, I've had a lot and I've had nothing. But I, I'm the same. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm the same with nothing as I am when I have everything. And that cannot be said for everyone who calls themselves followers of Christ. I, I've lived long enough that I see some folk who, who come from humble beginnings and get to a place with a title and an office and some income. And, and, and I, re I remember not long ago um, being somewhat caught off guard by someone who come from uh, from dirt just like I did. But when you, when you try to talk to them, if they look titled, they want to they wanna act like they God. They, they want to act as if they are God. So Paul said, I've learned that if the Lord put me on a platform and a level, this is a principle in this passage. It's not just about um, to be hungry or to be empty, to be full or to have a lot of things. It's about a, a, a can-do uh, situation where I can do it up. I can be a Christian as an executive. I can be a follower of Jesus. I can maintain humility. I can love. For, I can do it when I'm up, and I can do it when I'm down, when I'm full, and when I'm hungry. I can do it. I can do it when the storms are raging in my personal life, or my family life, or my vocational life. I can. I can. I can. I can. I have a can do. I can, I can handle this, Lord. I, I'm not going to give up. It may take me out, but I'm not going to jump out. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He, he, he says, here, I learned. So often, we are going through vignettes in life so we can learn contentment or peace. To be satisfied because... See, what life teaches us is there are some things that we can manage and manipulate and negotiate. That's good. But life teaches us there are some things just completely out of our hands. And we need to learn when to take our hands off that steering wheel. Because it's not going to go our way. And then we have to be content that, that God is going to drive that situation for you. Not you drive the situation with your intellectual idioms and input. Sometimes you just have to stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord. And then, then once you've gone through it a while, you'll be able to, that, that person who say, you know how we say it, won't he do it? Paul's can do attitude shows up when he says, I can do all things. He had earlier said, in whatsoever state. Then he said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Paul says, My can do is not my can do, but my can do is the knowledge that he can do. I can do because he's going to give me the power, the strength. I'm not going to jump off no bridge. I'm not going to take any pills. I cut cuss anybody out. None of that. Because Christ is going to strengthen me. Anybody know that you've been held by the hurt? You ever walked away from a situation and didn't know how you didn't cut up? That was the strength of Christ. Because that wasn't you. You just need to give God the glory for it. I'm glad I didn't slap, I didn't cuss, I didn't cut, I didn't, you know, take the chin. Through Christ who strengthens me. Paul says to let you know this evening that that thing you're facing, you can do. That thing you're dealing with, you can do. Not on your strength, but through Christ who strengthens you. We need to 
stay in the game long enough to learn to have a can-do attitude. This thing is not going to uh, destroy me. This thing is not going to whip me. This thing is not going to beat me. Whatever that God allows to be applied to me is just going to make me better. So a lot of us are in class uh, being uh, taught the lesson of developing a can-do. Not a can quit. Not a gonna quit. Not a gonna run. Not a gonna give up. A can do. Help me, Holy Ghost. Attitude. Listen, we thank God for you. I pray this word was encouragement to you. I can do all things. Hmm? I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. If you push over to verse 19, he says, God shall supply all my need. Whatever that need is, through Christ, I need a little peace. I need, God, I need some rest. God, I need some, some peace and comfort. I, I need to feel loved, God. My, my, my. My God, show supply all your needs. You're just in class, and i tell you one thing. Class was never easy. You managed to pass the test and move to another grade. And they said another level. Moving to the level of a can do attitude. God, we thank you for this word. You may have heard this word tonight. You may say, hey, I really want to be a part of that family in word and worship. And later on in fellowship, I want that to be my home. Or you might just say, I want to be a Jesus follower. And I want to use, let this ministry or this ministry be the ministry that I call my ministry, the St. Luke Christian Church. Or that may not be your desire at all, but you can join with us here. Or you can join with Jesus Christ. If you've not been baptized, if you've not given your life to Christ through the process, then we, we want to give you that opportunity. If you've never been baptized, never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And a cleanser of your sin. And I want you to know the sin is not what you do. Sin is just who you are. Shaped, born, and we, we, we are conceived in, in sin. It's shaped in iniquity. It's just who we are. Not so much what we do. It's who we are. That, 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 that thing that we have to understand is in all of us. Through our forefather Adam, we are sinners. Some act different than others more egregious than others. But we're all sinners, and we all, not based on what we do, but we shaped in sin, born in iniquity. Amen. If you want to lose that, walk away from that category of who we are in God. I want to make Jesus my choice. You can do that this evening. What I want you to do is repeat after me. So Lord, I am a sinner. I need a Savior. And I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my dead, buried, and my resurrected Savior. And I ask Jesus to come into my heart. Thank you, Lord. And own me as his child. If you did that, I welcome you to the household. Faith. The angels in heaven are shouting and rejoicing that you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Join the kingdom. Those who are the Jesus followers. Now, you may have already been a Christian, already been baptized, but the Lord is leading you to join this ministry. You can do that. I need both groups to go to the website, follow the join. Uh, menu there at the St. Luke Christian Church website. Give us your information. Tell us how you came, whether it was uh, a Christian experience, whether it was for candidate for baptism, and we will get with you very shortly. Listen, have a can-do attitude, and be blessed. Till we meet again.